game on its way to a flawless 3-0 record. The Americans with their backs against the wall. Can they do it? We'll see on our daytime coverage of the seventh day of the Goodwill Games. proudly presents the 1986 Goodwill Games from Moscow and from Madrid. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our daytime coverage of the Goodwill Games. Well, yesterday, it was the U.S. and, excuse us, we just lost our lights in the studio. Someone hit a switch. I would remind everyone that Nick and I are still here. Bob, it is dark. It is night in Moscow, but this is carrying it a bit too far. Skip, what we're going to, I'll tell you what we're going to do right now, Nick Charles, is we're going to go directly to boxing, and you're looking at the pictures of Don Chevrier and Paul Horning. Boxing begins today in 12 weight classifications. Gentlemen, you have lights there. We'll let you take it away. I'll tell you, it's awfully tough to box in the dark, so the lights are on here mercifully. Don Chevrier along with Paul Herning, and this is the first of many sessions of Boxing Paul, and an amazing story about a young man from Puerto Rico who has been in the United States just six months in New York City in the Bronx, got off a plane here in Moscow last night as one of the last-minute substitutions on this American boxing team, and what do you know, he is drawn, as the luck would have it, for the first bout of this competition. Kevon Ho Chan is a four-time North Korean champion, and we're going to get to the action right away, Don. Yeah, Juan Acevedo is the young man from Puerto Rico who certainly is having trouble finding his land legs, and never mind the jet lag and the sleep problems everybody's encountered here in the first day or two. It's awfully tough to get to sleep no matter how tired you might be. But he is confident, Paul, almost cocky, as a matter of fact. Yes, sir. But the menu for him is uh, not too appetizing in terms of possible success today. This 24-year-old, a four-time four North Korean champion, likes to throw good combinations. And so certainly an experience and freshness. The North Korean has got the edge here. The referee is Roderick Robertson of Great Britain. And there's a left thrown by the North Korean boxer. The referee, in this case the Great Britain referee, will caution and warn. A warning can cost you a point. A caution's only a reminder that you're violating one of the many different rules of amateur boxing, and we'll get to those as we go along. And it is amazing, Juan Acevedo there in the blue shirt just got off the plane last night, and as Don said, I don't know if he's got his legs yet. It's tough. Eight-hour difference over here in Moscow to the Eastern Time Zone in the United States. Uh, it's tough enough fighting a man of uh, Gavano Chan's experience, let alone the conditions he had to try to adjust to here in an awful hurry. He probably groaned and said, oh, no, when he was up as the first man drawn. The judges, they do the scoring. The referee will watch for any violations in the ring, and there's one right now. Some holding is going on. The caution there. Hard-hitting young North Korean taking it out on the young man from the Bronx, New York, ex-Puerto Rico, Juan Acevedo, representing the United States of America. And he's one of the eight boxers who uh, were added late. And uh, the nine fighters who didn't get to come who are in the Army, in the service. And he's one of the gentlemen uh, who has arrived here last night, and he is fighting this South Paul from North Korea. And Don said, four-time national champion. He's got a lot of experience in international boxing. A, supposedly a great left-right combination for this little flyweight. Yeah, John came along after the 80 Olympic Games here in Moscow. In fact, at this very hall, the boxing competition was staged. Seats 22,000 plus. And, of course, uh, North Korea did boycott the Olympic Games in Los Angeles. And for Acevedo, well, he's on his way up. But looking very promising here as he hangs in on the first round. A chopping right hand he throws to the side of the face of Gavano Chan of North Korea. As we're getting late now in round one, these are three three-minute rounds in amateur boxing. And many of the international and Olympic-style rules are in effect. And they're wearing headgear, which is compulsory for the United States team, but always hasn't been internationally. 
Toledo feeling his way, but taking more body blows now from Chan. Good combination. That's for the North Korean likes to throw as he works very quickly with two rapid-fire hands. Now throws a right hand up to Azevedo. He's been throwing the majority of the blows here. As you see, the time is winding down in round number one. It is scheduled for three. The flyweight division, the very first bout of the Goodwill Games in Moscow. And these inaugural Goodwill Games will continue after we pause for just a moment. Juan Acevedo with a tall order here as he just arrived last night from the United States, from the Bronx in New York, a last-minute substitute on the American boxing team. As you know the story, nine were denied permission to compete here because they're members of the military. And uh, he is in against this young man from North Korea, 24, Gavano Chan, who Paul has given all he can handle in the first round. Good blow to the body, and now Chan goes to the head. Russell Saunders uh, gave the instructions, the U.S. boxing coach, to Juan Acevedo between rounds. And I'm sure he said, you're going to have to go after him a little bit. This Korean's got good combinations, and he's scoring heavily with those combos. That's what gives you the points in amateur boxing, not the force of the blow. Certainly not even a knockdown will do much for you. It's the volume of blows that count. That white area of the gloves is the scoring area, and much of the scoring has been done by Gavano Chan of North Korea. As we're into the first minute of round two, scheduled for three here at the Olympic Sports Complex in Moscow. Acevedo, one of 23 boxers from the United States. There's the headgear for the North Korean being adjusted now by Roderick Robertson, the referee from Great Britain. Stop! And that is the command of amateur boxing stop. And the caution is to the corner for the North Korean, no coaching. Must remain silent while their man is in the ring. It is annoying to fans in the United States accustomed to watching professional boxing to see all the stoppages. Mm -hmm. The officials do play a very heavy hand here. Safety is foremost in international boxing, of course, and they've used smaller gloves here than we've seen in the box-offs uh, back in the United States. Eight-ounce gloves from the flyweight division all the way up to the welterweight, and uh, then 10-ounce gloves from the light middleweight to the super heavyweight. So uh, two-ounce difference than we've seen lately. And, you know, you have to really admire the heart and the courage of Acevedo. You know, it's tough. It's been for broadcasters getting off the plane. And this man did just last night, as we have told you a couple of times. But he is being outclassed here. The quick hands of Chan of North Korea have left no doubt in my mind as to who's leading on points at this stage in round two. When you uh, consider a one-sided round, you're looking at 2018 in amateur boxing. 2019 to give you a slight edge. That's how the five ringside judges score it. But much of the blows being thrown by Chan from North Korea. Acevedo, only 20 years old, Don, his uh, record is 89 and 20, we were told, uh, before he got here. He's not the most inexperienced of boxers, but I think he's, uh, as you can see there, John, just a little bit too experienced for him in an international scene. Well, John is getting there fast, he's getting there first, and he's getting there often, and that is telling the tale in this second round, even more so than the first round when I thought John had the advantage, but... Certainly here, he's giving the young man a boxing lesson, Acevedo, and of course, if he learns from it, that'll be valuable. That's what the international competition's all about. He's taken too many punches. He's got to go, uh, he's got to be a lot more aggressive, Don. He's got to start throwing some punches. He's getting way, way behind. He, he's hurt. Yep, he stung him there. We are late now in round number two at the Olympic Sports Complex. Stay with us. Yeah. With Paul Horning, Don Chevrier back ringside with you at the Olympic Sports Complex. The third round of the first boxing match of the Goodwill Games. 21 countries competing here. And the United States has Juan Acevedo in the ring against uh, Gavano Chan of North Korea. And whether it is just the jet lag or whether it's the overwhelming experience factor. But now, oh, come on, fighting desperately is Acevedo. He's cocky. He'll take it to you. But in terms of uh, combinations, they were deadly on the part of Chan in the first couple of rounds. We are also told, as this fight will end after this round, that at the broadcast center, the lights are back on. As the power <laughs> bank failed, the lights are certainly on here. And certainly for Acevedo, no danger of having his lights turned out by Chan. But in terms of being outboxed, there's been no comparison of the first two rounds. A big edge for Korea. And they accuse me of being in the dark all my life, right? <laughs> That's Bob Neal and Dick Charles tonight. But not for long. Well, anyway, later on tonight, folks, Arthur Johnson and Michael Bent, two of our best hopes for medals. You'll see them right here. Uh, and Michael Bent in the heavyweight division is probably our best shot at a medal. He is favored to win it. Arthur Johnson, a very slick flyweight. 
quick East St. Louis, Illinois, and he's tough. It's going to be an interesting night. Well, Acevedo here is very tough, too. He's just taking too many blows, that's all. Although more aggressive in this round, a short chopping right thrown by Juan Acevedo. Again, from Puerto Rico, just moved six months ago to the Bronx in New York. He was spotted there, and they said, you've had some experience in Puerto Rico. We'll take you under our wing and, for now, make you a member of the U.S. boxing team here at the Goodwill Game. This classy little fighter, though, Devon Ho Chan from Korea. I tell you, he's got good combinations. We were told he was excellent with these combinations. Is proved correct, Don. He's got a beautiful left, right, and right, left, and uh, he just works upstairs, downstairs, and he just scores a lot with those punches. Yeah, these are flyweights. They don't tack a tremendous wallop necessarily, but the quickness of the hands of Chan have been very, very impressive here, as young Mr. Acevedo was found out. Just 20 years of age, getting a boxing lesson and a good one. Probably blocking about a third of the blows that come his way because the combination that is thrown frequently by Chad is so quick. It is so hard to react to for the young American. And so into the third round he goes in what looks to be a losing cause. Although certainly this wouldn't be a candidate, I would think. But you get some strange decisions for the five ringside judges in international boxing. Again, the referee does not have a call to make on the winner. Tough flight for one. Nine and a half hours to London. They probably laid over two or three or four hours. Then another four and a half hour flight to Moscow. And he got here. Not much sleep. And they, the first fight of the game, the boxing competition. So... You got to feel for him, but admire his uh, courage in getting in there and trying to mix it as best he can with a good right. A man that is uh, tattooing him left and right. He'll come back with a good left hand and right of his own from time to time, but he takes about four to the one he's able to give. And now down to the final 15 seconds of round three, as Chan would appear to be on his way to a decision, holding and hitting there. The referee cautions the North Korean, who bows, but the damage is done. So it's going to go to a decision here for Chan and for... Acevedo as he takes a stiff straight right from the Korean at the bell to win three brisk rounds of boxing here to launch the Goodwill Games boxing competition. And don't forget that we will have women's volleyball, the United States, who worked their way into the final four, the medal round, against the Soviet Union. That'll be coming up later on tonight. And uh, that American team, buoyed by that win that got them there in the final game, might just give the Soviets a... Uh, as the American women's basketball team did last night, as you saw. There's Roosevelt Sanders, who was the assistant coach to Pat Nappy in the 84 Olympic Games. Now the head man on this boxing team. His aspiration is to become the Olympic coach two years from now, but he's the man in charge in Moscow. Again, the five ringside officials will be deciding the outcome. They are from the Soviet Union. As you watch some of the action there, and look at the volume of punches coming through by the North Korean. The Soviets, Venezuela, East Germany, Romania, and Ireland are the five ringside judges represented here. And uh, Acevedo gave it all he had, but he didn't come with all the equipment he'd like to bring to a situation such as this. And what a beautiful complex the Olympic uh, Stadium is here. This is cut right in half. It'll seat up to 22,000 for boxing, and the other side, gymnastics is going on. It seats about uh, 19 or 20,000 for gymnastics. This is probably the most modern facility they have here in all of the uh, USSR, and for hockey, they can open this thing up, 45,000 people, and folks, they sell it out for hockey, I'll tell you. Yeah, that. the reason World Hockey Championships were held uh, right here in Moscow, as a matter of fact, and so... Sean and Acevedo await the outcome of this first battle of the Goodwill Games. The referee from Great Britain collecting all the cards, and then they will have them all straight and make the announcement that we fully expect will be a decision. And... Uh a pretty one-sided one in favor of Gavano Chan yeah, of North so. Korea. Maybe later on tonight, Michael Benn and Arthur Johnson will have something to say about that. I think they'll be favored, and we're anxious to see two of our big hopes for medals going tonight. All right. Ready for the announcement of the judge's decision here. John, no surprise. John had a decisive winner the way we saw it, and most people saw it here as they applaud his victory over a tired but game Juan Acevedo, representing the United States for the first time internationally in the country just six months out of Puerto Rico. He gave it all he had, but it wasn't quite good enough. And we'll be back to boxing in just a moment.
Don Chevrier and Paul Horning ringside. Michael Vadinsky of Bulgaria in the red. And Archer Fausto of Mozambique. Now a couple of flyweights. After we saw Juan Acevedo of the United States decision unanimously by Gavano Chan of North Korea in the first bout. A couple of Americans coming up later on in today's program. Anthony Johnson will be in there. And big Michael Bent, one of the heavyweights. But right now, the eliminations in the first round in the flyweight category, 51 kilograms. You'll see contrasting styles here, Paul, with the Bulgarian characteristic of the stiff, upright stance of the Europeans, the more loose and flowing African fighter. 51 kilograms, as Don said, 106-pound limit for the flyweight. In the last bout, we saw the American lose. He uh, lost by as many as five points in the eyes of three judges. Another judge by four-point margin. In fact, four of them out of five gave a five-point victory to Gavano Chan of North Korea. So let's see if this one works out to be any closer at all in the second bout. Vidinsky of Bulgaria in the red. And the opponent from Mozambique, Archer Fausto. Boxing just underway here. It'll continue throughout these inaugural Goodwill games. And once again, when you see a devastating punch, that's not... That doesn't necessarily affect the outcome. In fact, it doesn't as far as the five judges are concerned. The referee can stop a bout. He can take points away for violations, but he doesn't score it. In fact, even if the referee, Paul, doesn't see something, mm -hmm. the officials at ringside, in their own estimation, can deduct a point for a violation. And there's no jury uh, as far as the international boxing rules are concerned here. Juries usually can't overrule split decisions, but not here. No. So it's in the hands of the five men watching this one as the boxer from Mozambique is chasing his Bulgarian opponent on the ring, lands a good left there. Best shot he has gotten through in his first round yet as the Bulgarian fighter Vidinsky now tries to tie him up over on the far side, but Fausto goes to the body, then comes back to the head. It's short chopping right. Good response there, combination by Michael Vidinsky. Vidinsky standing his ground, trying to tee off on this Mozambique boxer. And they're Stop. starting to mix it up now after getting the feel of each other for the first few seconds oh. at least. Well, the European uh, style, of course, is straight, uh, stand up, erect. And, of course, we'll see that as we go along in these championships, right, Don, with the Russians especially. They love, they're very erect and, and they look so proud. You've you got to have a good, uh, good jab to hold them at bay because they keep coming like a, a truck with no brakes. No matter what you throw at them, they just relentlessly pour on you. So the jab is a marvelous defensive weapon and also a way to open things up. But Fausto from Mozambique is getting some good shots in here. A fairly even first round, but in my opinion, he's gotten some blows in. But now Vadinsky throws one late in first round. Action as you see it winding down to the bell to win round one. <laughs> round two at the Olympic Sports Complex. Michael Vadinsky of Bulgaria, Arthur Fausto of Mozambique. Pretty even first round. I thought that Fausto in the mid part of that round got a good volume of blows off. He's very aggressive, but this Bulgarian is so hard to back up. As you saw, we should correct this as the flyweight division here at 51 kilograms. And we'll get a series of these bouts until some heavyweight action comes up in the eliminations of the Goodwill Games. Much harder punchers than the first flyweights we've seen. I'll tell you, these kids are mixing it up, and they uh, their punches look a lot stronger. Yeah, the man from uh, Mozambique looks to be uh, a little bigger than the 51 kilogram right. category, and with that comes some of the power. He's got this Bulgarian moving backwards. You don't see that too often, but watch him now stop and come forward once again. So he's finally gets tough to cut the ring off on him. This is the second round scheduled for three. Again, the referee does not have a vote. Force of blow is an important volume of good scoring blows are between the midsection and, of course, the head. The white area of the gloves is the scoring area. The officials at ringside will look for. And with the headgear, they're very cautious about injury here at amateur boxing. And a bout can be stopped rather quickly with a standing eight count. Or if a severe head blow takes place, the referee can call it off right there. But neither of these appear to be any difficulty right now. In the red, Batinsky from Bulgaria and from Mozambique, Archer Fausto. Volleyball coming up later. The American women's team has made the medal round. They'll play the Soviet Union in the semifinal. And we're wondering if they can follow up.
up on the uh, minor miracle in Moscow last night when they gave the Soviet women's basketball team mm. their worst beating in history. Boy, I saw that, Don, and I'll tell you, that was the worst defeat that uh, the Russians ever had here uh, by the USA team, and it, they played sensational, those girls. Well, you consider the way they played and having to play it that way in Moscow and doing it. It's just a phenomenal sports story. I want to remind you, at the end of this round, we'll have a word from our local stations for you, so stand by for that. This is the second round, but Dinsky of Bulgaria and Fausto of Mozambique mixing it up in the 51 kilogram flyweight division here of the inaugural Goodwill Games. And now Vadinsky coming out with a good combination that seemed to stop Fausto in his tracks. Fausto again responding though with a looping left and a shot to the body with the right hand. Fausto now stalking his man. He can't quite figure out what Vadinsky's about to do because when he backpedals, he'll stop in a hurry and fire a flurry of the blows back at you. From a counter punching stance, but a good right there got Vadinsky off balance. Vadinsky, though, comes back with a looping right hand as they tie it up in the center of the ring with time winding down here in round number two. Three, three-minute amateur round. Vadinsky, very good. Uh, he's always on his toes. He moved in. Oh, he's got a good right in. Good right cross there. And he staggered Fausto. I tell you, these kids hit. They do. They mix it well. And good. Don Chevrolet, ball horning back with you ringside, round three, flyweight boxing action, the Goodwill Games. You're watching it live from Moscow, Michael Vinci of Bulgaria, and Archer Fausto of Mozambique. And I think this uh, this match is up for grabs right now. We get a caution, and uh, this whoever wins this round, I think, is going to take it, Don. It's amazing. We've seen now our sixth round of boxing, and the only people who have had their lights turned off are Bob Charles, or Bob, <laughs> Neil, and Nick Charles back in the studio. <laughs> Everybody on their feet here, although there goes the head guard of Archer Fausto. The Russians do not like the headgear, per se, and uh, but they were overruled, and it is the mandatory thing here. Yeah, they do not like it. Uh, the Bulgarians and the Germans don't like it that well either. The United States Amateur Boxing Association did that a number of years ago, and I think wisely so. And uh, again, the rules are being firmed up all the time to ensure the safety of these fighters. We're about a minute into round number three here. And while Vadinsky has fought well in that second round, I'll let Fausto got off to a good start in the first. It's a tough bout to score. It's really a difficult bout to determine which man has the edge. So it could be up for grabs, giving the subjective attitude of amateur boxing for the officials. Vadinsky has got to be very careful with this Archer Fausto. When the referee hollers break, they, they do break, but he comes right after him right away. He's ready to go. Watch. Boom. Comes right in with a few hits. Well, you remember the most famous infraction of that nature happened to Evander Holyfield of the 84 Olympics when the referee from Yugoslavia just barely set break and bang came the punch that knocked down his opponent from New Zealand and Holyfield was disqualified. So the officiating, the judging certainly varies in character and personality. This man perhaps uh, letting these two fighters mix more than you'd normally see and hold more in amateur boxing. Mm -hmm. Strong flyweight you're looking at, and a good right hand by Vadinsky. Yeah, right off that break, he just pushed him back pro style and hammered him with the right hand. It is cautioned by the official for that, but the action goes right on. Another quick right thrown by Vadinsky. He sets things up. He doesn't follow too well with it, but he does surprise Fausto when he uses that right so quickly. Three words used by the referee: break, stop, and box. That's it. The international vocabulary of amateur boxing. Vadinsky oh. looks to be wearing his man down a little bit with the long arms of uh, Fausto coming out from occasion to uh, make their point. Women's Break. volleyball, don't forget, Break. coming up a little later on, the semifinal action in the U.S. against the Soviet Union. But right now, you're seeing a bout that is up for grabs between a Bulgarian and a boxer from Mozambique, the second bout here in the Goodwill Games amateur competition. He's a little tired right now as Fausto's hanging on a little bit. He leans in, but he gets some good body shots. A combination of the body of Vadinsky. Vadinsky trying to set him back so he can get a shot at it. Well, they're both, both tired, and rightly so, Don. They've been throwing some long-range shots for three rounds. The little sting it out. <laughs> you see, this doesn't often happen, this uh, half-holding, half-hitting thing in amateur boxing. This referee is letting a lot go that you would not normally see. Vadinsky now has a good right throw into the ropes. And the batter from Bulgaria goes to the midsection, working down low, trying to get it up to the head. Finally, now they call a break. And the official is just issuing a caution there at the bell to win round three. So 
interesting action. We'll have a decision coming up, and we'll be right back after this word from the Olympic Sports Complex. Well, did this man, Michael Vodinsky from Bulgaria, win this flyweight bout, or did it go to Archer Fausto of Mozambique? A very tough fight to score for the five ringside judges, I would think. And their cards are being collected now by the referee, and we should have the outcome shortly. Uh, I don't know if you agree, Paul, but I think I would give a slight edge to Vodinsky. Well, I would think so, too, even though I thought the other kid was the aggressor and uh, threw the heart over the punches. But just like you say, in this kind of judging, it's the number that counts. Now the referee for openers to turn them the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Vidinsky, there it is. Yeah, he wanted Michael Vidinsky of Bulgaria has won the flyweight elimination bout, so he'll continue here in this elimination series of the Goodwill Games. Don't forget, we've got volleyball, the U.S., the Soviets coming up, but right now, from Moscow, we'll pause for just a moment. So the boxing is underway today. The U.S. ragtag team of substitutes, uh -huh. nicknamed by their coach the Doggies and the Leathernecks, <laughs> called off the streets of cities all over the United States, are here to try to win. The first one was brave but lost. We'll see what happens as we continue boxing coverage. But today, the U.S. USSR volleyball coming up in a moment live. Part of what the Goodwill Games, Bob, uh, promotes is togetherness. So again, it's the Soviets against the Americans one more time with feeling. What a matchup this is. The Soviets are so powerful. They're disciplined, grounded in fundamentals. They just have defense, size, strength, a lot of depth. The United States overcame a sleeping pill start. They looked horrible in that first game, but they're improving and they're enthusiastic and will need a remarkable effort to beat the Soviets. Boy, do they, are they a looming presence. Remember, the U.S. volleyball team has been together only 19 days before this game. Mm. And remember hockey in the Olympics a few years ago? Cross your fingers if you're a U.S. fan. We'll be back in just a moment. So the U.S. women's volleyball team lost early. There were even wire service stories in the United States saying that they were not going to get into the medal round. But thanks to a series of events and the total number of games won in the matches, the U.S. did make it to the final four. Japan, Peru will play later. Soviet Union, probably the favored team along with Japan. So the U.S. team that had only a short 19 days to prepare for this tournament is now ready to see what they can do against the powerful team from the Soviet Union. It's going to be an exciting game. We're going to carry it live. Let's go now to Lenin Central Stadium, small arena, seats about 8,000 people. Here's Leandra Riley and Ann Myers. And Bob Neal, the tension's so thick here, you could cut it with a knife. The United States is one and two in pool play in volleyball competition. The Soviet Union, undefeated in volleyball competition so far in these Goodwill games. Decidedly, the USA is the underdog. And I, for one, am pulling for the underdog. The United States has been getting their act together. They have many talented individuals. And what they needed was a concentrated dose of playing together. As you said, Bob, they've only been together for 19 days. And I think this goodwill experience has been good for them. I think they're ripe to pull an upset. How about you, Ann Meyer? Well, they really played well against Czechoslovakia. They did lose one game against them. But I thought they started to play much better as a team. They're starting to know each other. And it's a big difference when you have a brand new setter in there like Michelle Boyette trying to get her hitters and connect with them, it really makes a big difference. And you can see that they're starting to still feel each other out. And of course, the USA is now getting adjusted to the eight-hour time difference. Like I said, I think we're right for an upset here. We'll be back with the start of the game between the Soviet Union and the USA after this. Hey, Stadium, up? smaller arena. Later, you will be able to see the other semifinal game between Peru and Japan. Of course, the USA and the Soviet Union being the two survivors here. As you can see in the standings, the Soviet Union is undefeated. Peru only lost once, and that was to the Soviet Union. The German Democratic Republic was 1-3, and, and the Federal Republic of Germany was 0-3. Oh and, and that was in the pool that we called Pool B. In Pool A, where the USA played, three teams finished at 1-2 and two in matches, but you can see in the game situation, which is what they consider the tiebreaker, the USA won more games, winning five, and in doing so, it's the top two teams that advanced to the semifinals. You take the second team from one pool to play the first team from the other, and that's why we have the USA going up against the Soviet Union. As you look at your screen, the USA will be in white. They will be on the right side of your screen. The Soviet Union will be in red and blue and on the left side of your screen. I think one of the things you have to watch for the Soviet Union, which we've been watching all tournament long, 
is their hitters, their middle blockers and their outside hitters. They are very devastating. And number 11, Elena Chebakina, and number 3, Elena Volkova, are veteran players, and the Russians, the Soviets, will go to them an awful lot. For the United States, Paula Weissoff, number 4 for them, has been playing a lot better. She's a veteran on this ball club. She was on the 1984 Olympic team, and she just joined the team about two weeks ago. And Carolyn Kirby, number eight, has been switched from a setter to an outside hitter. And so they need a little bit more production from her. And watch for Marsha Bond. She's been a very steady player for the United States, number 12. Bond certainly has been consistent. Carolyn Kirby is the captain for the USA. And number two, Svetlana Safranova for the Soviet Union. She is their king captain. And serving first will be the Soviet Union, and they are going to give the ball to Olga Krivoshieva, number 12. Who is the setter? Number two. Interesting note that Terry Laskevich has been alternating the USA starting lineup frequently. He is starting Elena Odin, a very new member to the squad and the youngest member of the team. She's just 19 years of age, and you see her. She's wearing number 15. She's up at the net at the bottom of your screen. A big girl and a powerful hitter. And she's starting from Melissa McClendon from Arizona at 6-1, who is the other middle blocker that usually starts, but Elena's been coming in and playing an awful lot of minutes. And that's Weissoff going right into the Soviet box. And the Soviet Union gets their first point, one to nothing, USSR. Volkova in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and they are very strong in the net, not only attacking, but blocking-wise. They said by Odin, Boyette has to hit. Weissoff lobbing deep, and the block is there again. It is Volkova, two to nothing, USSR. Well, Weissoff, the veteran of the, the team, she's had two years experience over in Italy the last two years, and against Volkova, nothing worked. Odin. And that is out of bounds, side out for the USA. Boyette will serve. Atlanta Safranova. I like Safranova. She's at five, eight and a half, and I think she's one of their stronger hitters also. I, th I think everybody hits well for the Soviets, but she really has an unusual way she hits the ball, too, with that one arm right up in the air. And Odin couldn't get it through the Soviet Union, and now the USA is down by three points. Elena Volkova with the service. The score is three to two. Boyette going behind to Weissoff, who finds the center of the court, side out USA. And she was able to use some options right there. The blockers were not able to get up in time, and Weissoff was able to hit right through it. Here's that jump serve. Boyette goes behind to Kemner. The time she goes forward to Kirby. It's still up. Make it over, it does, but it's over and out. Point, USA. That was good hustle by the Soviets. They're not one of the quicker teams in the world, but they're so strong, and they have that kind of hustle. It shows you what kind of team they really are made of. White off with a holocaust. Woo! Two serving three. What that jump serve is doing, she's getting up so high, and when she hits the ball, there's so much top spin on it, and the way it brings the ball down, it's a difficult serve to pass, and you can see how the ball comes off the arms of the receiver. Mm. They're falling on that one. Not a good set. Ah, three, and now you see why Weissoff does this powerful serve. It does have a high percentage of service errors, but when you can get points like that, down and dirty, it's worth it. She can get very tired, too, in a match if she continues to do this. In one of the matches earlier in the tournament, she decided not to do that, and she served from the ground, and she served very well with that serve. And that one punched right through the block, side off for the Soviet Union. Kundaleva, another good, strong hitter for the Soviets, going to the middle, quick hit right here. Odin with the fake, Kirby puts it down, side out. Kirby makes a nice hit going down the line. That's exactly what the Soviets gave her. Elena Odin, just a sophomore now at the University of the Pacific, led her team to an NCAA title as a freshman. 
that was out because they are no block. Side arm pull for the Soviet Union, some touch it. Three to three is our score, Svetlana Safranova serving. I like Bond. You can always give it to her and can always give it something good. She has designed the outfits that the United States is wearing. That's right, she was a fashion design major in school. Uh -huh. Nice dink. Out of bounds. The United States is also in the net. One problem that the United States has been having throughout the tournament is their passing. Dina Kachalova serving three to three. And that's something you don't see too often from the Soviet Union is a service error. Carolyn Kirby will serve for the USA. <laughs> Out of bounds, point USA. <laughs> the tank is working. And the Soviet Union will get a side out. Trevo Sierra just saw nobody was there in the middle and made a nice little dump shot. Three serving four. Nice short service for the Soviet Union. And it's lobbed over. Good block. Good block. Bonded White off. And the Soviet Union looks a little disjointed out there. Well, I don't think that they've really warmed up yet. In their first match, they had a little bit of difficulty against Peru and lost one of the games in that match to Peru, but came back and won the other two. That's true. Volleyball is a game of adjustments, and if they can make the fine adjustments for the second, third, and fourth games of the match, that's all it takes. Even though this dink shot went down, it was nice to see that there were several players going for the ball. Sometimes players will look at each other, hesitate, and then nobody goes. What you're looking at now is what we call a floor wipe when a player dives on the ground and sweat gets there and it could cause her to lose her footing and possibly cause an injury. So they signal for the referee to come over. He verifies that it needs to be wiped and he in turn signals for a young girl to come out with a mop. Out, wipes off. Boyette able to get a good outside set because of the pass from Kemner. Boyette serving. Over the line for the Soviet Union, they didn't call it. Now they finally did. Well, it took them two times to go under. Five three. Good block by the USA. Boyette setting to Odin, and it dances off the block for a point. Good movement right here. Elena Odin coming in for the number one. Puts it in the back row. Six to three, the USA is on top. The first time out of the Soviet team, the score is... Welcome back to Lenin Central Stadium, smaller arena. Our score is six to three. The USA leads the Soviet Union in women's volleyball semifinal action. This is the first game of a five-game match. And as you can see, the Soviets just got a side off. They will now try to put some points on the scoreboard. Into the block. Boy, it goes behind. This is Kemner into the block. Defensively, the Soviets are really reading well what the Americans are going to do set-wise, and Michelle Boyette has to mix it up a little bit better. Krivosieva at the net is just incredible. Kemner into Krivosieva again. Kirby. Boyette. Nice dig. Nice backcourt fix up there by the USA. Soft dink is covered. And the battle at the net is won by the Soviet, as won by the USA. I'm sorry, that is off the Soviet fingers. Kemner uses Kachalova's hands to make that ball go out of bounds. Sloppy play, it went out of bounds. Point for the USA. And Safranova, number two, you saw how she went up with the one right hand. She leaves that left hand hanging down. 
That's still over. That's over. Bad pass by the USA, and the Soviet Union capitalized. Chevokina goes, thank you very much for an over set. One of the best sets in volleyball. Kirby from behind the 10 foot spike line. All the way over to Kirby again. And it falls in the middle, side out. And a good fake by Marsha Bond in the middle got the Soviets block up a little bit early in the middle and they weren't able to close it in time to the outside. Kemner serving. Nice shot. Eight serving four. But you're right, Leandro, what you said earlier, the Soviets really don't look as sharp in the first game as they have in the whole tournament. Side out, USSR. But they're calling net violation against her. Point for the Soviet Union. Five to eight. That's basically all she could do because of the pass. There's Marcia Bond making something out of nothing. Well, that's right, because that set looks like it just barely gets over the net, and Marcia Bond almost has to push it. On the line, Chevokina. She's 6'2 and 20 years old. Out. Good, good play by the Soviets. Again, they faked the Americans out. Marsha Bond went for the fake in the middle and it left a one on one situation for Volkova. And Tara Luskevich has called a timeout for the USA with our score, 8 to 6, the USA's on top. We are back as you take a look at a disappointed USA squad. The score is now even, 8 to 8 in game number one, their best of five match against the Soviet Union. That was a fortunate break. The service went out of bounds, so Marsha Bond will step behind the line and try to put some more points on the scoreboard for the USA. When Michelle Boyette has gotten a good pass, She's been able to take advantage and mix some options up. Elena Volkova putting it away. has been strong on the outside for the United States. Both of us. Kirby setting now. Weiss off. Volko to service. Lysol gets it back. And a good pass to Michelle Boyette. Elena Oden made a nice fake in the middle and the Soviets went for it. Jump service is good. Nice timing by Oden. Katsilova gets it away. Odin that time got caught in the middle and wasn't able to get over quick enough to the outside and help out. Kirby. Yes. Good hit by Kirby because that is too tall Soviets to go through.
pushing her stops all the way with Shevachina. Well, it almost looked like it was going to be an overset. Marsha Bond went up for it, which left Kemner all by herself, and Shevachina took advantage. Nine serving eight. There's an overset. Nobody was there. Usually, Shevachina would have licked her chaps on that one. <laughs> Number seven for the USA is Karen Kemner. She's 21 years of age, 6'2". Nice dig. Bond lobs it. Kachalova from the right side. Defensively, the United States has been working on a new rotation defense before they came in, and they have been working it a lot better that time. There was nobody where they should have been. Kirby gets outdueled at the net. Point for the Soviet Union, 10 to 8. Michelle Boyette really had to hustle to try and even get any kind of setup too close to the net, and Kirby couldn't take advantage of it. Again, Boyette hustling to get a setup. Off the block side out USA. Kirby was the setter before they came over here to Moscow, and they just switched her to the outside hitter, and so she's been passing the ball a lot more, and the team was really solidified when she was setting, but they're going through a lot of changes. Nice block. That took. Talk about using the net. Carolyn Kirby made a great effort, though, to just even get a hand on it. 10 to 8. The Soviet Union is on top. This is our first game in a best of five match as you watch a floor wipe. The Soviet Union 3 and 0 in goodwill competition. The USA is 1 and 2, having suffered losses to Japan and North Korea before they beat Czechoslovakia to survive their pool. Bond setting, Weiss off very deep. Dink is coming, it's still alive. Coming over free. <laughs> Great hustle by the Americans. Lena Vosova. Vosova, the veteran on the team at 6'3 and 26 years old. And Terry Laskevich calls a timeout for the USA with his squad trailing by three. It's the USSR 11, the USA 8. We'll be back. Welcome back to the women's volleyball competition. Liz Masakine in the game for Marsha Bond in this USA-USSR match. Unfortunately for our sponsors, volleyball takes 30-second timeouts. We need 60-second timeouts to accommodate the people who are bringing these football games to you, which is why we are joining these games in progress every time we come back from a commercial. It is now nine serving 11. The USA trails by two in this first game. Weiss off putting it down. Volkova. Scrambling is Kirby. This is Boyette the setter with the spike. Volkova. In ball. And a substitution for the Soviet Union coming in the game is Julia Dalchevich. Exiting is Safranova. Right now, the United States is playing with the Soviets very, very well. They have played well throughout this tournament. Terry Laskevich, the coach for the United States, is really pleased with the way they're playing, considering it's a new team. Side out again for the USA. All their games throughout the tournament have been very, very close. Paula Weissoff coming through again. Nine serving 11, Michelle Boyette behind the line. <laughs> Off the block, Boyette has to backpedal, couldn't get there, side out. Well, the big difference too with number six, Elstovich coming into the game for the Soviet Union is that she's left-handed. And being left-handed in this game really makes a difference. It can throw you off. Oh, 
Off the block is still alive. Whitehall. Dink. And the USA pushes it over. Side out. Great awareness by the Americans. Be ready. Come back for that attack right there on the net. You saw in the graphic where it said Paula Weisshoff is the only member of the 1984 Olympic team as we watch a substitution for the Soviet Union. But Lana Lukolatova has now entered the game. And Paula Weisshoff has brought a lot of confidence to this team. She really has, and you can see the difference with her playing. Also, talking about the 1984 Olympic team, Carolyn Kirby was an alternate on that team. The first game, or the first match in the tournament for the United States against North Korea. Paula looked like she was still trying to feel herself around and didn't know what was going on with the team. And now the team has really adjusted to the way she is playing. Yes, Paula is the most recent addition. Paula had left the team since the Olympic Games and has since come back, but just a couple of weeks ago. So you're right, there was an adjustment period needed. Not only for Paula, but Michelle Boyette coming in and setting where Kellen Kirby was setting and Angela Rock was starting for the United States when Paula came in and took her place. Great dig. Cheva Keener. Side out again. The Soviet Union still leads by two, 11 to nine in this first game. 15 points is a game. Winning three games claims the match. I think Solcevic has one of the best serves in this tournament that I've seen. Out. Kemner. Substitution again for the Soviet Union. Svetlana Safranova back in the game. And he must always substitute for the same person, so Salchevich has gone out. Kachilova. And the USA is requesting a floor wipe, but we have another substitution for the Soviet Union coming in is Elena Volkova. You know, it's nice in one sense where you can wipe up the floor because it stops playing if you want to rest or change the momentum. But also, it's bad that you have to wipe it up all the time because you want to continue playing every time you have to stop because it's so wet. Through the block goes Kirby. And against the two big guns for the Soviet Union, Volkova and Chevokina. Right through him. Chebukina number 11 for the Soviet Union. Trailing by two, Kirby with the service. Volkova dances off the block against the USA. And Weissoff hibbling on a sprained ankle possibly. She twisted it, landed funny on her teammate's foot. You saw them get tripped up. And we may have an injury timeout here as Weissoff tries to shake off a sore ankle. She's wincing. This is Paula Weissoff, and if she's out of this match, that's a big loss for the USA. She's the, in pain. The thing that's tough, too, is the fact that it's on her jumping leg, too. And while they take care of Paula Weissoff, we are going to break away from the action. We'll be back. From the volleyball arena here at Lennon Central Stadium, Paula Weissoff has been removed from the game. She has injured her right ankle. She's being attended to by the trainer. And replaced in the contest by Angela Rock. There you see Paula Weisshoff on the side while they take a look at her injured ankle. They're really going to miss her if she can't come back. Soviet Union now is taking a 12 to 9 lead. But filling in for her is Angela Rock, as you said, Leandra. She used to start on this team, and in the last match against Czechoslovakia, she played super. So if she can continue that play, she could really help the United States. Through the block. Side out for the Soviet Union. They now lead by three, 12 to nine. Boyette to Odin, who slips it through the block. Side out USA. Well, they kind of missed connection there a little bit, but they'll take it. They don't ask how. Rock with the service. Elena was player of the year last year with UOP winning the NCAA championship. Nice up by Bond. Coming over free from Kemner. Volkova with the dink, and the USA was ready thanks to Elena Olden, and it's a point. 10 serving 12. 
And Safranova didn't look like she knew what she was going to do. There you can see that left arm staying down, and that's how she hits the ball. Here's another jump serve. Rock replacing Weissoff, so they're going to keep one jump serve in there. And a free one coming over for the USA. Let's see what they can generate. Kirby into the block, out of bounds. Point USA. It is now 11 serving 12. 15 points is a game. And the Soviet Union elects to call a timeout. And I bet Angela Rock is happy because she can rest. We'll be back with more of game number one. But first this. We are back and the score is tied at 12. The Soviet Union now has the serve. This is game number one. And they are going to call a carry against Angela Rock and the Soviet Union takes a one point lead. 13 to 12, 15 points is considered game. Reaching over, no they don't call it, 14 to 12 and we are now at game point. Two poor passes in a row by the United States. All the way over to Kirby, into the block, and it comes back at the USA's back line, and the Soviet Union takes the number one, 15 to 12. Now the USA had to finish this game without Paula Weissoff. Let's take another look at what happened to her and when she hurt her left ankle. Well, there's a double block by the United States over on the right side there. Weissoff and Bond going up, and when they come down, mm, she's on her foot. That left ankle just turned underneath her. So Paula Weissoff steps on Marsha Bond when they come down, and that has put Paula Weissoff out of the game. The USA trails now one game to none. We'll be back with game number two, but first this. We are ready for game number two between the USA and the Soviet Union. You see what happened in the first game. This is the second. USA now with the service. Crush the rush <laughs> is one of the signs that we're seeing here in this arena. There you can see the sign. Go USA, he's shouting. That's a kind with the hit. Deep corner. And that gets the ball back for Elena Odin to use for the serve. Zero serving zero, game number two. Nice push through by the USSR. And they lucked out on that one. They sure weren't in position for that kind of hit, but it went their way. Masakayan goes over the block into the corner, side out. That's the second deep one that she's hit right in that back corner. She has the best vertical jump on this team with 33 inches. She's only 5'8", but she makes up for it. a funny and lucky spike by Mastakayan. Lucky? She planned that one. Oh, oh, okay. Karen Kemner with the service. Nice dig. Mastakayan going up, thinks it over, but they're ready. Katsilova goes down the line, but Elaine Oden gets a piece of it. Side out. That's a great shot by Kachilova because of the fact that the block was almost cutting away that line shot, and that's exactly what she took, and she got it. Kemner goes down the line. They called it in. So did I. Side out. You'll see the United States a lot of times back set to their back row players and let them hit from behind that 10-foot line. Marsha Bond taking the overset. Steady Marsha Bond, always there. It is two to nothing. As you look at Karen Kemner, she's wearing number seven. She's 6'2", 21 years of age. And uh, we have a floor whip on the Soviet side, which is delaying the game here. And it is two to nothing. USA is serving. Into the block. Nice job by Kirby and Bond. Three nothing. The 
Shabokina into a block. Shabokina setting. Katilova over the block. Odin gets a piece of it. Bond was over the line. They didn't call it, though. Don't tell him. Oh. Kemner. This is a great rally. Oh, and it comes down the blocking side of the USA side off for the Soviet Union. Kirby and Bond are there for the block, but they're a little bit late getting up, and they can't close it. And when they can't close it and get up soon enough, their hands are not over to get the ball on the other side. Kirby, it right into the block. It comes back inbound, one serving three. First point for the USSR. Boyette setting for Kirby from the corner. And that one is golden, side out. Boyette did a good job in coming back to Kirby. It shows that you have a lot of confidence in that hitter coming right back to her, even though she's gotten blocked. She used the block really well off that. That one went down the sideline, side out for the Soviet Union. Watch Chebukina. Every time she hits a ball or gets a ball, ball down for a kill. She kind of looks over at the American team, laughs and smiles and says, yeah, mm -hmm. that's trying to get a pick. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of rivalries going out there, even though you can't have physical contact. A lot uh -huh. of players talk at each other, give each other's look. Uh -huh. So there's there's a lot of intensity out there. Many psychological games going on amid, amidst this big match. Three serving one. USA is on top in this second game. Still alive, still alive. Kemner takes it out of position beautifully. What an athlete. 4-1. Kachalova and Safranova just got caught looking at each other defensively. Off the block. Boya tried to get a piece of his side out. Volkova the veteran. Off speed. Got it over, though. Off the block. And Boyette couldn't turn around fast enough. Time job by Volkova. And one of those floaters off the block didn't give any of the people any time to get underneath it. This is Carolyn Kirby you're looking at right here. Boyette. Back to Kirby. Woo! Great down the line kill. A great set by Michelle Boyette and fake in the middle by Elena Odin. They may have to fix the floor after that one. Four to two. <laughs> Masakayan goes off the block. It's still alive. <laughs> ah, side out. Fine play by Sadlana Safranova. Sepernoi hit a nice off speed there. United States got caught back in the backcourt and just couldn't get up to it. Two serving four. Boyet to Odin. Still in on the timing right on that play. Off the block and out of bounds. Point. Odin has to be a little bit quicker coming off the net after she has attacked. She has to get back ready and play some defense and get up there for the block. She's a little bit late getting over. Time they go back to Kemner, who gets the job done. Side out for the USA. A one-on-one -on -one situation. Kemner's going to come through. She's the strongest player on the team. Elena Odin serving. Three serving four. Elena Kundaleva with the service. Kemner, again, side out. And there's that one-on-one -on -one situation again. Well-placed shot by Safranova. Side out for the Soviet Union. They still trail by one. It's three to four in this second game. The Soviet Union took the first game, 15 to 12. Kemner, still alive. Great what a play. 
Matt Rupp by Goyette, taking it in the second hit because that girl was not back in the court. Sokranova was hustling as fast as he could, but couldn't get back there. Well, the United States went with that back set to Kemner in the back row, and she's hot right now. She hit a great shot, but Volkova made a great dig. Soviets kept it alive, but as you said, Leandra, United States were patient and made a smart move on the line. Oh, oh. oh no. On the upside of the I'm line. I'm at a bad angle, I guess. <laughs> I, think, I think you're on an American angle. <laughs> That's why I don't judge lines. <laughs> Three serving four. Soviet Union still trails by one. An American line. Bond with a dink. This is out of bounds, side out USA. They're still having a little bit of trouble in the middle of the United States on connecting there, but that time it worked to their advantage. Nice try by Kirby, but that left hand by Solcevich again throws you off. Paula Weissoff has put her sock and shoe back on and she's dancing around to see if she can get back in shape for the game. I think they've taped her ankle off, but she still looks a bit tentative to me. Time will tell. Three serving four, the Soviet Union down by one, but leads the USA in games, one game to zero. Kirby, to the block. The dink, USA was ready, Kirby sets. Goes back to Kemner. Nice blocking by Goyette. Goyette. You usually don't see her go up. She's not a bad blocker, but by herself like that on an overset. Left-handed. Oh, Odin able to get a hand on it. So I'll tell you if left-handed hit was... Uh, so let's see if you have an American angle. This is that service that we said was in and oh, out. Cut hey, the chalk. I, I think you were right, Ann. It flew up. Or that was the ball. Your unbiased American eyes are vindicated. <laughs> I played against the Soviets too many times. <laughs> Fine block by Salcevich. Three serving five. The Soviet Union now trails by two. Boyad to Odin, and that has never gone quite right for those two. They've been getting away with some soft ones getting over, and that one just went into the net. Four serving five. In the long run, it catches up with you. Goes behind Kirby. Spikes again. The double whammy. <laughs> but that shows you the great reaction from Carolyn Kirby, how quick she can get off the ground to recover like that. To recover, react, and redo. <laughs> Massakine leaves the game. And we are going to see Melissa McClendon, I think, has entered. No, it's Eileen Dempster who's gone in the game. And this is the first for her in the tournament. Kemner using the block well. And the USA is once again up by two. Six serving four, all into the net. Kirby's had a lot of difficulty serving throughout the tournament. This is her first service error in this match. Very difficult serve. Odin this time gets it, but the blocker was ready, and Kundaleva gets the point for her team. Five serving six. Nice coming through by Kimner, a little too much muscle though. And this ball game is tied at six, and the USA takes a timeout with our score, the Soviet Union six, USA six. We'll return Today against the more. Soviet Union, the USA now trails by one point. A score is seven to six, Soviet Union on top. Soviet Union won the first game. Marsha Bond puts it down. We're tied. Bond hit that nice and deep, but again, it's not the kind of hit that you like to run in the middle that you're going to connect on where it's going to go straight down. A little bit of a miss. The ball was right behind her. A shot by Bond. Good up. Dempster. Goes through the block. Kachalova. 
This is for the Soviet Union. Nice save. Unfortunately, nobody was able to help Kemner out. Okay, the United States really has played very well in the tournament considering the kind of team that they have put together, but this is the best that they have played in any of their matches so far. There you go. Boyette and Bond finally connected. Now if we can get Boyette and Odin to connect. <laughs> Kemner serving, seven to seven. Back set. A little sloppy, but it worked. Still up. Dempster. Off the block. We saw the same thing. <laughs> USA is the lead, 8 to 7. Eileen Dempster has made a good adjustment. She used to be a middle blocker, and she has to has had to adjust to an outside hitter. Ooh, yeah, over set. Marshall loves those. She's so good at them, too. Everybody loves those. <laughs> but not everybody's good at them. <laughs> Sends the Soviet missile over and the USA can't strike back. Seven to nine. Oh. USA had the right idea on that one. Nobody was up on the block for Boyette. Just a little bit outside. Service goes into the net. Now there's more volleyball coming up this day in our Goodwill coverage. We have more volleyball later on tonight. You'll see Peru playing against Japan. Plus we have boxing. Michael Bent of the USA will make his debut in this Goodwill telecast. But right now the issue at hand is the USA against the USSR. The winner goes for the gold medal in tomorrow's final game. Serving nine. Pretty shot. Pretty shot from the back court, considering Kemner, that's where she was positioned. Watch her take off from behind the 10 foot back line. Mm. What an athlete. She's playing well tonight. She has really crunched some fights. Kathy Nose is in the game for the USA. She will serve. players took in the basketball game last night where the USA defeated the Soviet Union resoundingly. And I know they'd like to repeat that performance to beat the Soviet Union here and go on and take the gold medal in volleyball just like their basketball sisters did. We have a timeout here. Our score is the USA 10, the Soviet Union 8. The first timeout of the USSR team in the second set. The score... Our score is now 12 to 8. The United States is on top. Kathy Nose is still serving, and the Soviet Union has elected to take a timeout. Kathy Nose has been very effective off the bench. In fact, the Soviet Union has changed their uh, lineup a little bit. They brought in Valentina Ovienko for the first time. Now, she had been a starter in earlier matches, and now she's coming in off the bench. Let's see what effect that has on their personnel. And we're going to break away from the action here because we have some messages to bring you from our sponsors. USA is on top. Fine serving by Kathy Nose to get the USA a lot of points, and the USSR had a side out. They got, they got no points, and the USA got more points. This is a very hot contest here at Lenin Central Stadium Small Arena. This is the second game. The Soviet Union won the first. And the USA is letting nothing touch the ground. Off the block, out of bounds. Points, Soviet Union, 9-13. to 13. These last two times, the Soviets have really used the block well. They just hit right off at that time. Kemner all by herself. Kirby coming over free Boyette Kemner yes right out Kemner's been incredible she's got like three or four kills from the back row and here she's just muscled it right past the block Kirby's really having a good game, too, not only defensively, but also her hitting. Oh, oh. That's her second service there. Oh. 
Nine serving 13. The, the, as you were saying, Leander, the players were at the women's basketball game last night, and I looked up and I said, well, who's, what are you guys going to do tomorrow night? And they said, win! Well, they're fired they up. They were all excited. Now they've got to make their uh, actions speak louder than their words. 9-13, to 13, Soviet Union has to serve. This is Valentina Ogienko. Let's go, girls! Let's go, girls! Bond into the block. Can't do anything about it. 10 serving 13. Chibakina, six two and a half. All by herself, she took care of it. Timeout has been called by Terry Luskevich of the USA. And now I put myself out on a limb. I said I smelled an upset tonight. I know you did. What do you think? I, coming into the tournament and after seeing the Soviet team play, which was the first time for me, I thought no way did we have a chance. And I mean, I love this team to death. They're a bunch of great gals there and I've had a chance to see them play in February. I saw them play down in San Diego and I just thought the way they were playing in this tournament they snuck in the back door and really didn't have a chance against the Soviet team. But they're playing great ball tonight. And I think the Soviets are playing pretty good and we're staying right with them. Bond setting back to Boyet. Goes over to Dempster with a deep one and it's good side out. And we have one of our veteran players, Paula Weishoff, out of the game right now. Sometimes that's a motivator. When you have your, your leader on the bench, everybody plays just a little bit better than they're used to. Nice block. Fortunately, it traveled down the net. Dempster couldn't get to it side out. Safranova will serve. Safranova at 5'8 and a half is really powerful. She gets up with that one-arm swing. Doesn't really look like a volleyball player. <laughs> Good life. Good heads up play. Nice block by Bob. Still alive. Chibukino, nice up by Dempster. Boyette goes right back to Dempster through the block. Right out. Dempster, first time in the tournament she's played. Comes through with a key hit right there, right off the block. She had to defend, she had to go on offense, and now she has to serve. Nice block. USA in the net, side out for the Soviet Union, 10 serving 13. Goes behind to Kirby. Chibokina dinks it, Kirby's ready. Kemner from behind the 10-foot line. Answers her own block. Bond with the tip. United States is just hustling all over the place. They're coming through with the clutch play when they need it. Bond serving. Left-handed hit is good. That's Salcevich. Odin and Boyette trying to get over. Salcevich just hit right over the block. 10 serving 13. Odin still can't get that thing just right, but it's messing up the block more than it's messing her up so she's been getting away with it. Just a lot, a, of, a lot of times it's, it's frustrating too because when you keep missing you just want to hit that one down all the way mm -hmm. and it's nice that the results are the same as far <laughs> as it coming through on your side it's like in golf there you, see you hit a bad shot it comes off your club head the wrong way but all of a sudden it lays up right next to the pin you hit a great shot and it's out of bounds That's exactly what they're doing in the middle 13 to 10 USA with the service Boyette setting out to Kemner, into the block point USA, 14 to 10. Kemner is puffed up. <laughs> Game point. Oh. Boyette, too pumped up. Yeah, too much adrenaline. <sighs> Substitution. Eri Rivian is coming into the game for the Soviet Union, and Svetlana Safranova will sit on the bench. Nice up, turn around, Kirby, she did. 
Oguien Cosette. That's nice back again, but it goes out of bounds. Soltovich on that right side with the left hand going down the line. Hands through the United States turned outside. 11 to 14. Kirby. Still alive. Boy, yet to Odin. Sinks it in there. Hey, they better keep hey, missing like keep that. it that way. <laughs> Forget the power. Just, Just keep, keep missing. Keep chipping it in there. She's jumping too soon since she's catching it on the way down. That's the problem. Or she's setting too late, one or the other. Game point at stake here. Oh, I thought Good it hit up. the ground. That's a free one. Dempster. attention to one young Carolyn Kirby, a 1985 graduate from the University of Kentucky with a degree in photojournalism. She's begun a career in modeling, and she often represents the U.S. team in publicity photo sessions, and you'll see when you look at her, she is very photogenic. She's 5'11", the ideal height for a setter. She's also the best blocker on the team, but we don't see her as a setter anymore. We see her as a hitter. Here's our Goodwill profile. someone that is dedicated and strong-minded to pursue a goal. Very often as a coach, you'll be on the sideline in a match and you'll kind of shake your head and hey, how did she do that? One of the big reasons that we are number five in the world after one year is because of Caroline Kirby's play selection and leadership on the court. I was born and raised in Brookline, Massachusetts. I uh, played three sports there. I was uh, recruited to Utah State University. I was nominated for the Broderick Award, which is the best female athlete in the country, and uh, that was a great honor. Then I went on to be an alternate of the 84 team, played under Ari Selinger. As soon as I started that, it was just like, this is the sport for me. I knew right away. It's the epitome of speed, agility, endurance, excitement, transcendence. It's just a great, complete sport. Everybody in this program is, is doing something for their personal growth as well. Photography and modeling have always been an interest of mine. The afferent system would enter what... I ended up working toward a degree in psychology at San Diego State while I'm here. I want to continue studying. You know, I want to continue to learn and communicate the things that I think. I'd like to tie it all in somehow. I was looking over these plays, and I was wondering what you thought about this. When you're here in left front, and Caroline puts her heart and soul into just about everything she does, whether it be on the court or off the court. She doesn't do anything halfway. Where I would hit the, the quick set. Our practices are really intense. You know, in the morning we get a lot of hard uh, quality work in the gym. The weight training, right now we're working on um, building strength for the next few years. You know, we're, all, we're working on, on uh, becoming a lot stronger physically. We want to be able to um, continue high intensity playing without fatiguing out. My function on this team is to make things happen. I'm a 5-1 setter, and I think I have the abilities to, to be real dynamic in that role. This, to me, is, is a commitment, but it's not a commitment where I feel like I'm just bound to it. You know, it's something that I have chosen. It's something that I've always dreamed of, you know, and it's something that I know is going to make me a better person. Carolyn Kirby sporting a new hairdo for these Goodwill games. She is wearing number eight, and she's been doing a phenomenal job for the USA. Right now, our score is tied at one to one. This is our third game between the USA and the USSR. We are even one game apiece. 
you also have to give Kirby a lot of credit as far as switching positions and taking the idea in her mind that she can't go and set the ball on the second, on the second hit. She has to move away and get the position for the, as a hitter. Oh. Karen Kemner, you are looking at now, disagreeing with the call. Side out for the Soviet Union. One to one is our score. Make that two to one. Vonda Boyette, not a great pass. Kirby making chicken salad out of chicken feet. She does it all the time. You can send her anything, and she'll get it over the net and get the side out. The way you say that thing. <laughs> you may quote me. <laughs> no. Effective dink by the Soviet Union. Good jump by Ogienko to follow the ball. Almost looked like there was not going to be the right timing there, and she put up her hand, got the ball. Dempster into the block, out of bounds, it's good. A lot of times Salchevich, which I think is the best server in the tournament, at least the hardest in the tournament, she really doesn't get a lot of points off her serve. Boy, it wasn't quite ready for that. Side out. Ogienko with the service. They are saying it is out. That was one of those chalk calls. Mm -hmm. There you see Paula Weissoff still icing her left ankle, which she injured in the second game. Side out for the Soviet Union. It now looks unlikely that Weissoff will get back into the game. The Americans have really pulled together without her. It's unfortunate that she's not playing in this game. Bond, one of the better repeat jumpers, can get up there and hit, get up there and block. This time it danced out of bounds. Soviet Union has a three to one lead. Side out, USA. Dempster and Boyette just didn't rotate the right way. Dempster going one way, Boyette just stopped. Good up by Bond. Kirby lost it, deep. Four to one. American have to settle down and regroup themselves. Another point, Muscovich is gonna call a timeout. Bill Hufflin, Kirby. Yeah. Kina. That's it, the timeout has been called by Terry Luskevich. With our score, the Soviet Union 5, the USA 1. Three, one. Five. Turner Network Television Goodwill Games coverage continues after the... The story, we are tied at one game apiece, and in this third game, the United States trails the Soviet Union by four points. Marsha Bond serving for the USA. play by Chepikina. She had a chance to maybe kill it, but Elena Bond was right there, and she just kind of pushed it right back down. Substitution, Elena Oden coming out of the game, and coming in, Melissa McClendon. <laughs> Service was too long. United States will get another chance to put points on the board. Michelle Boyette behind the line. And another substitution, Kathy Noth will come in. She was very effective in the last game, scoring three or four quick points. She's been very effective whenever she's played. She's a defensive specialist, a good server, and also is a setter. Out. Salcevich putting it away for the Soviet Union. Krivosheva serving. McClendon. 
Safranova. Hemner. Good dig. Still alive. Think Bond is ready. Back set to Kirby. It dribbles down the block side out. There's that transition. Ogienko and Salcevic really couldn't get back quick enough, and Kirby got it right to him. Substitution for the USA. Anning Dempster will come out. Angela Rock will go in once it's approved. First, our official is supervising a floor wipe. Now he'll address the substitution. Dempster's out. Angela Rock is in. Substitution in the USA team. Terry Leskevich, last two matches, last night against Czechoslovakia, tonight against the Soviet Union, used a lot of different looks with different players out there. Side out, it is five to one. Oh. Six to one. Karen Kemner needs to get back into the offense. She really hasn't been hitting the ball that much, and that's the first spike she's had in quite a while. Beautiful thing. Real smart thing. She's playing so well offensively. She's really digging the ball super, too, but she's really been taken out of the offense, and this is the second time they've gone to her, so she needs to get more involved. Good hands by Bond. To the block, USA's ready. Rock. Back to Safranova. Into the block by Rock and Bond. And what happens when Safranova is on that right side, and because she only uses that right arm, she doesn't use her left arm at all. She's not deceptive whatsoever. That's long. Nobody touched it. Point. Three serving six. Soviets are running the middle very well right now. A little back set to Ogienko. Terry Luskevich, born in West Germany, grew up in Chicago, graduated from Loyola. Got his master's degree from George Williams College in the Chicago area. Still alive. Good up. Swing and a miss. But still alive. Got to go over. Bond tips it deep. Petulova. This is the best defense I've ever seen the Americans play. Oh, bad catch. That was a nice rally. Safranova with an overset right there. Rock can't get over in time. And Melissa McClendon caught that one almost in her face. Seven serving three. Soviet Union on top. This is the third game. The price you pay. I like that. <laughs> or anything else. <laughs> Hamburgers, hot dogs, right? Still alive. Nine to three. The USA is taking a timeout because they're just falling apart here very rapidly. Our score again, nine to three, even though the match is tied at one game apiece. Very lopsided in this game. The second time out. This is game number three. Quick set to The Americans knew it was coming, but they couldn't get off their feet in time. Yeah. 
block. And so Kine gets a piece of it on the block. It falls down 13 to 3. Soviet Union two points away from a game victory. A little help from the net right here. He must win three games to take a match. If the Soviets win this game, it will only be their second game victory. Thirteen serving three. Karen Kemner coming in the game for Luz Masakayan. Substitution in USC two. Number seven returns. Three times it serves the ball to Kemner. She had gone out. Liz Masakayan had come in for it. Now Kemner's in. Makes another poor pass. Game point. Into the net. Side out. The USA gets another chance. They were going for Kemner. Well, now Kemner has a chance to come back. We're having a whistle because of a ball in play. But one of the balls rolled up off the, onto the court. Be a replay. No point awarded. Three serving 14. And now we're having a... Uh, a side out with some confusion here. Tara Laskevich is questioning what happened. Well, Angela Rock bent down to move the ball away, and the whistle was blown to, to stop play. And now they're calling the side out. It should be a replay. Oh, the, the down official saying replay. Replay, the up official saying it's a replay. The up official was giving the ball to the Soviet Union. Yeah. That's Bruno. The up official, the down official is Ben Sun Tan of Korea. But now we're underway. Rock served it, 3 to 14. And we have a point, 4 to 14. Makes things very difficult when you don't speak the same language. And that's a side out for the Soviet Union. Game point again on the line. Soviets have been very strong with Chepikina in the middle. Safranova serving. Carolyn Kirby's trying to get the floor wiped up, and the up official keeps saying, no, let's play. Kirby says, let's wipe it up. <laughs> Kirby's trying to get something from the up official. She wants to wipe her hands off, I guess, or... She wants to check the rotation to make sure they're not overlapping each other, which there are a lot to do, checking the rotation. She wants to find out who's serving. And while they straighten this confusion out, coming up tonight on our Good World Games coverage, we have boxing, water polo, wrestling, and cycling. It'll be the first appearance in boxing by the USA's Michael Bent. Bob Neal and Nick Charles will be in involved with our primetime coverage, as will Marianne Laughlin, holding down the anchor position back at our studios. <laughs> 14 to 3. Game point at stake here, and it goes into the net, and USA ends this one on a whimper. They lose 15 to 4, and we will be back with more USA, USSR volleyball, but first we're going to take some time out. Portions of the 1986 Goodwill Games are brought to you by Diet Pepsi, the one calorie choice of a new generation. Game number four between the USA and USSR is now underway. Our score is zero to zero. USA in white, the Soviet Union in the red and blue. And right now in this match, the Soviet Union holds a two game to one advantage.
We are at Lennon Central Stadium. This is the smaller arena. I'm Leander Roddy along with Ann Myers. And these are the semifinals. The winner of this match will play for the gold medal against either Japan or Peru, depending on the outcome of that semifinal. Good strong hit by Carolyn Kirby there, going right through the block. The Soviets still look awful strong in the middle. They just keep attacking, and the Americans really haven't found out what to do against that. What? Side out. Soviet Union on top in this fourth game, one to nothing. That would have been a deadly serve had it landed in bounds. It really had a lot of downward action. Well, I said Salchevich is a great server, but she doesn't score very many points off it. Elena Odin serving for the USA. You think Salchevich is there? Kachalova. Fine, tipped it over. Kachalova. Odin's ready. Short to Bond. Good throw. Boyette to Bond again. That was a little bit below the net. The dink. Boyette. This time she goes to Kemner, goes into the block and out of bounds. Good rally. Good rally for the Americans to get that point. It seems to be more worthwhile when it's for a point as opposed to a side out. That was worth one. It's now tied. Dink, they're ready. Odin setting from the backcourt to Masakayan. Oh, lucky dribble from Masakayan. She'll take it. Two to one, USA. Good block by the USA. Three to one. Von and Kemner up on that middle block. One more point was for Vladimir Patkin, the Soviet coach, to call a timeout. Three to one, USA. Back set to Masakine, who tips it over. Safranova into the block, out of bounds, side out. There's some good rallies starting out in this fourth game. Some of the best rallies of this whole tournament are happening right now. Masakayan into the block. It goes out of bounds off the Soviet hands. Side out to the USA. Bond makes a good fake in the middle. Chepakina kind of dancing around there and can't close the block. Through the block. Step for Nova. You just want to take that left arm and bring it up or something. It just looks so unorthodox. Bond right into it. That out, USA. Three serving one. One of the few times that the middle hitter and setter have hit have connected for the United States, and when they have connected, it has usually been with Bond. Masakine serving. Out. Second time she's done that in the match. Dina Kachalova serving for the Soviet Union. Kirby into a block, and nobody else can help her out. That is a wall right there. Straight down. It's like shooting at yourself and trying to dodge the bullet. Kirby into the block again. Kemner got it in the face twice, I think. Three, three. Three, two, and now we're tied. You have to try something a little bit different next time. Boyette in a dinking match at the net. To Bond. Nice quick set. Now Bond and Boyette have that act worked out very well. Boyette and Odin do not. Marsha Bond. Three to three. Kachalova left-handed. Bond is a little bit quicker at the net right now than Elena Odin. Elena Odin, only 19 years old, and really her first international experience. But Bond gets across, up and down that net, is able to get up on the outside, go to the middle. Hey. 
Shevokino puts her team on top, four to three. Three. Kirby wanted a touch. She had gotten blocked twice last time. Ball came right back to her. She took something off it. And with that, she didn't get anything. That's out. Side out for the USA. And that saves Terry Deskevich from calling a timeout. Is Angela Rock will come in the game for uh, Carolyn Kirby. Angela Ross. And Rock was one of those. Substitution Jump serves will start in the front row. Number two enters the game. Michelle Boyette will serve right now. Side out for the Soviet Union, and the USA trails by two. <laughs> Boyette to Kemner. Side out for the USA. Kemner's really on tonight as far as her hitting is concerned. If they can keep going to her, she can continue to stay in that groove. There's a floor whip on the Soviet side of the net. Angela Rock will serve. Angela Rock, five feet eight inches tall, 22 years of age. She graduated from San Diego State, but lives in Laguna Niguel, California. Under the net, side out, two in a row now. And the sixth service there of the match for the United States. Saltovic serving. And Terry Luskevich elects to take a timeout with his team trading by three and trading in the match two games to one. A 7-3 lead in this fourth game. They lead the series 2-1. to one. If they win this third game, the Soviet Union will play for the gold medal as this is the semifinal match. USA and White, the Soviet Union in red and blue. I'm Leander Rade along with Ann Myers. And that's Michelle Boyette to lose Masakayan, and they're making something out of it. Unusual miss by the Soviets. Fine, dinks it into the center, but they're ready. Safranova dinks it. Nice up by Masakayan. Rock will set her up again. Kachilova hits it out of bounds. Good eye by Masakayan. Good camera angle as far as where the block is and how both players go up together. Nice block by Marsha Bond. Four serving seven. Katsilova into the block. He's still alive. Good right. save. Gets it up. Karen Kempner was there, but Michelle Boyette just reached back. Didn't think anybody was going to get to it. Seven to four. The Soviet Union is on top. The USA loses this match. They will play for the bronze medal against the loser of the Japan-Peru match. The two winners would advance to the gold medal final. Master Kayan. Good block by Bond and Boyette. Forced her to go down the line. She had to go outside of bounds to hit the ground, so it's side out for the USA. We just score some points right here. This is Masakayan. Rock. End of the block. It comes down. Good. Point for the USA. Good strong hit by Angela Rock. She's one of the strongest players on the team behind Karen Kemner. Bench pressing over 200 pounds at 5'8". Good block. Shibukino, it's still up. Rock will set it. Bond will do something with it. Good deep hit. Shibukino, nice up by Oden. Nice save. 
Kimner lobs it over. Off the block. Brock couldn't see where it went. It was behind the official. They couldn't get to it. Side out. This is a good back set by Kreva Sheva. Number nine, Kachalova, because Angela Rock was all by herself, so it was a one-on-one -on -one situation. The perspective from Dina Kachalova, who will serve. Volleyball court is 60 feet long, 30 feet to the net. The Americans have really played the Soviets tough tonight. They lost that first game 15-12, won the second one 15-10, and this third game that they lost 15-4 is the worst defeat that they've had in the tournament. Side out for the USA. Kemner from the back row again. Nice back set by Michelle Boyette. Much Boy, that's fun to watch. <laughs> Shabukino finds a spot in the center. Side out for the Soviet Union. Shabukino serving. That time Odin got it. So did the Soviets. <laughs> One thing at a time. That's out. No touch. That's what they're saying. Side out, USA. Michelle Boyette serving. Good block by Rock. Boyette. The Kemner. USA. Thought of it. Doesn't like that call. They're whistling here in Moscow. Oh, I thought from where I was sitting. With your American That's eyes. That's right. Okay. Right through Liz. <laughs> they get it back. <laughs> Substitution for the Soviet Union coming in the game. Elena Kundaleva coming out. Zetlana Safranova. Yeah, the Americans are crawling back into this, but it seems like any time they get anything going, the Soviets shut them down. Odin, yes. She needed that. As long as the Americans can get a point at a time, keep chipping away. Angela Rock, not jumping with her service this time. Point, USA. Krivoshieva trying to get over there, but Ogienko thought she could get it. Seven serving eight. Nice up by Kemner. Boyette will set it. Kemner will do something with it. Still alive. Coming over free. Rock will pass. Short to Odin. The fake out. Kemner. Never over. Got caught. That was a nice cross that they ran. The thing is, with Odin up front, they really haven't connected with her at all. And the yep. Soviet block was there for Kemner. Pretty up by Rock. Masakayan goes over the block. Oh. But it's out of bounds. Point for the Soviet Union. Nine serving seven. We had a radar gun on that serve. <laughs> That's the fastest serve in this tournament. Got to down the line, out of bounds. Nobody touched it. Side out for the USA. The Americans really have not let the Soviets get that far ahead of them or get into any kind of groove. Side out for the Indians. I don't know where Liz went on that block. But Ogienko was all by herself. And Rock swallowed it. Nine to seven. Sloppy pass. Bond gets it. Through the block. No one can get it. Point for the Soviet Union. Ten to seven. And Tara Deskavis calls a timeout. It team trails by three, and they're down in the match. Two games to one. Prishuti Sim Dizit. The wardrobe for the talent of the Goodwill Games has been provided by the John White's Companies.
welcome back to Moscow, the broadcast center. I'm Nick Charles. Bob Neal's off for a few hours. He will be back on our primetime coverage. More sports open today. Later in this hour, we will show you boxing. But right now, let's go back to that exciting fourth game of the match between the U.S. and the USSR in volleyball with Ann Myers and Leander Riley. Thank you, Nick Charles. And this is a real tooth-pulling match here. Soviet Union's on top, 11 to 7. Now, you just saw a spike that went out of bounds, but the Soviet blockers touched it, so it'll be side out for the USA. Substitution now for the USA. Kathy Nose coming in. Marsha Bond taking a well-deserved rest. And she has just been incredible in the front line. The Soviets are leading by four, but the United States has really played strong in this fourth game. They're digging an awful lot of balls, and they're hitting the ball well. Nice up. Kirby couldn't get it up. Side out for the Soviet Union. USA just four points from elimination from the gold medal round and will have to play for the bronze because they can't stop the USSR. Service went into the net. Side out. They can that way. They stopped themselves. Michelle Boyette serving. Bounced off the block, side out for the Soviet Union. Elena Odin was there, but she just couldn't get her hands. She hesitated a little bit too much. <laughs> Kirby, comes right back at her. Good reaction by her. Through the block. Point. 12 to 7. Salchevis has come into the game for the Soviet Union, has really done a good job. She's played in two of the games in this match and has been really strong with that left hand. Substitution for the USA. Masakine will come out. They're saying, saying too, too late. late. At least we think a light. The first referee already beckoned for the serve. Trevishiev is serving. Oh, Sochevich being on that left side couldn't get her body around and had to go right into the block. Eileen Dempster is in the game. Massacine's on the bench. Kirby with the service. Dempster played at UOP for Terry Laskevich when he was the coach there. Point for the USA, 8 to 12, and Port Laskevich couldn't get an NCAA title the year he leaves. Pacific gets the NCAA title. <laughs> Carolyn Kirby, 8 to 12. Out of bounds off the block, side out for the Soviet Union. Kundalev is very effective, number four for the Soviet Union, and using the block. They're such a tall team. They, they've got two players that are 19 years old, so they're not that old either. They've got a couple players that are 25, 26. But they also have the youth out there, and they've got a player six four and a half in Salchevich. So it's a lot of mixture out there. Up the server right here. Kemner, Karen Kemner, very good down the line. And we will have a substitution. No comes out. Marsha Bond will come in. A strong rotation for the USA in the front line. Substitution for the Soviet Union. Coming in the game is Svetlana Lakolatova. Substitution in the USA serving number takes a seat on the bench. Odin serving for the USA. 8 to 12. Off the block, out of bounds. Side out. It was a good block. Ogienko strong and using it. Boyette to Bond. Bond with a nice block. Out. No Nobody touch. It. Side out. The thing that's hard in, in these rotations with Bond in the front of the net, the Soviets know that Michelle Boyette is going to use her, where Odin, they haven't used her at all because they keep missing each other. Next up by Kemner. Kemner gets it right back. Nice save by Odin. 
this time she couldn't get to it. Side out for the Soviet Union. Chubikina. Nice double fake for the Soviets. The Americans are staying tough with them. They've been on 8-12 for quite a while. If you're just joining us, this is the fourth game between the USA and the USSR. The Soviet Union leads the match two games to one. They also hold the lead in this contest, 12 to 8. Side out for the USA. Good soft touch by Marsha Bond. Here she knew if she hit the ball hard, it'd go right into the block, so she hit right over it. Eileen Dempster will serve for the USA. How many service errors now? Well, that's the fifth one in this game alone. Coming back in the game, number 16. Coming back in the game is number six. Exiting is number 16. So Salcevich is back in the front row. We have seen a lot of side outs. And by that, I mean you don't score points unless you have the service. The International Volleyball Federation is thinking of eliminating side outs. How do you feel about that, Ann? Well, there's been talk about it, it being eliminated. It being, I personally kind of would like it because I think as a fan and even as a player, oh, you like to see a lot of points scored and you work so hard and everything is side out, side out, side out. We've seen some of the um, game against Japan and North Korea and there were 49 side outs in one game. And that match went an awful long time. Oh. So I, I would kind of like to see more points scored at a quicker pace. And if they do make the rule change, they have talked that if it gets to 12 or 13 points, then they will automatically go to the side out again. But the games won't be as long. And back to this game, it's now 14 to 8 for the Soviet Union. Game and match point on the line. If the Soviet Union wins, they will go on to the gold medal finals. The USA will go to the bronze medal finals. Substitution USA team number three. Fourteen serving eight. And the USA is still alive, side out. Good kill by Carolyn Kirby. Kirby and Kemner have had to take over the hitting positions with Paula Weisshoff out with that sprained ankle. Fine for the USA, 9 to 14. Timeout called by the Soviet Union's Vladimir Patkin. And Terry Leskevich is trying to keep his charges calm, and the Soviet Union is trying to break the concentration of the USA. The score is 14 to 9. The Soviet Union one point away from being in the final. I talked to Terry Leskevich earlier throughout the tournament, and he was saying that he's very pleased with the way his players have played. He has left some players back in San Diego. There's more than just the 12, and he hopes to have maybe 15, 16 by August 15th. And they're going to go to the World Championships in, in 1988. He hopes that that team will be solidified. So he's really happy with the way this team has performed at the Goodwill game. Boyette serving. Into the block, point USA, 10 to 14. Karen Kemner read exactly where that set was going to go to Ogienko, and she put it back in her face. Down the line. Bond got a piece of it, but it was misdirected. Side out for the Soviet Union, and once again, game and match point on the line for the USSR. You know, the blocks for the Americans weren't able to get closed. Rivoshieva serving. Dinks it. Yes, right out. And a great set by Karen, uh, Carolyn Kirby. You saw how soft her hands are. She makes a great set to Kemner. And a smart play by Kemner by dinking it. Kirby serving. Bad pass. 
Ogienko will hit it into the block. Point USA, 11 to 14. They're tight. They got a roll going. Game isn't over till they make you shake hands. And that one found the ground. Side out to the Soviet Union. And for the third time, we are at game and match point. Saltovich at 6'4 and a half went right over the block. Boyette to Masakayan, who dinks it. He loves the stars ready. Oh, that would have been out. Marshall Vaughn and somebody else touched it. And this ball game is all over. The Soviet Union has defeated the USA. Three games to one, taking this fourth and final game, 15 to 11. That was a valiant effort by the United States. I, I really was surprised at how well they played, but I'm not surprised because they are a tough ball club that has hung together. They were out with Paula Weissoff getting injured in that, in that game, and without her, they really pulled together, and I thought Kemner and Kirby played super, and Marsha Bond was really incredible tonight. She was a player that has been very, very quiet, but has done the good job. The Soviets, very strong, up at the net, attacking and blocking. They were just superior tonight. Later tonight, we will show you the other semifinal match between Japan and Peru. And then tomorrow, live, we'll bring you the gold medal match. And that'll be between the Soviet Union and the winner of the Japan-Peru game. In the bronze medal match, it'll be the USA against the loser of the Japan-Peru game. From Lenin Central Stadium, the smaller arena for Ann Myers, I'm Leander Riley. So long, everyone. Let's go back for more sports and the rest of the Goodwill Games. Welcome back to the Goodwill Games and the Broadcast Center here in Moscow. And I hope you've been with us the past couple of hours for at least a portion of what has proved to be, what proved to be a very thrilling match. Women's volleyball, the powerful Soviets, went out and threatened to blast the United States off the court. But obviously, the, uh, the Americans were stubborn, persistent, and almost rose to the occasion. A couple of hours of thrills as the Soviets move on to the gold medal game. We will have boxing coming up, flyweight action, and uh, a lot more. So stay with us as the Goodwill Games continue from the Soviet Union. Boxing open tonight. The flyweights are underway. This is an entertaining division. Lots of punches, lots of action. And David Grimman of Venezuela was taking on Joe Lawler of Ireland. Let's pick up action in the second round. And for the call, Don Chevrier and Paul Horning. Round two is underway between David Grimman and the Red from Venezuela and the green-clad Irishman, Joseph Lawler, the champion of Ireland from the city of Dublin. David Greenman with a good first round appear to have the advantage. Paul, South American champion, silver medalist, and the world champion. He's shown a good right. He's just 19 years of age, and I really am amazed at how he handles himself in the ring given that tender age. He's got a good reach. He's got a 66 inch reach for this little flyweight, and he's taken full advantage of it. Caution there by the referee McGuire from the United States for using the open glove. Good hook. Good hook there by Greenman, and he's forcing Lawler in the role of a defensive fighter only at this stage. Lawler having trouble getting something started because of the quickness. Now for a shot on the top of the head, another caution from the referee. Not a warning that'll take a point away, but repeated actions might do that, of course. 2019 would be a close round in amateur boxing. 2018, only two points, but a very decisive win for one fighter. So probably 2019 would be the scoring for Grimmin in that first round. 2017, and you almost had it. 2016, they're going to stop it, right? Well, they'll send somebody to take you out, <laughs> take you home. Again, the referee does not score. That's in the hands of the five ringside judges. Good to see headgear worn here at these games, and uh, as you'll see as the games continue, that standing eight counts are always in effect. It's a good safety measure as well. Stop. Lawler not necessarily hurt by Grimmins' blows to this point, but they've been very, very effective, very good scoring blows. There's that hook he tried to throw again, came up a little short, couple of chopping hands, now uses the right again. Does David Grimmins of Venezuela in the red shirt. 
got that advantage with that reach, Don. And he's hooking with that left hand. And he's scoring points. The Irishman, uh, kind of more of a flat-footed kind of brawler. At least that's what he'd like to be in working in close for those long arms that reach advantage. The quickness of Grimm and keep him at bay. Puts his head down, takes some blows coming in. Now comes back with a right hand of his own. Not going to hurt you, but as we keep reiterating, it mounts up. You really need to take two rounds out of three to be sure because the two-point rounds uh, are very, very rare in uh, this game. Certainly three-point rounds are uncommon. But Grimman piling up the points here as you see three or four punches from him to one, but a good one there, right hand thrown by Lawler. Now Lawler throwing the jab, trying to set up the right, didn't connect with it. Grimman now dancing away as Lawler fires a Weak left, then a right to the body. Short chopping right hand to the head. And this is where the Irishman likes to be if he can stay here in close, if he can keep his man there. But he's running out of time in round number two. As Lawler comes out, it takes a chopping right, a second one. Right down to the final seconds of the second round of their flyweight bout here in Moscow. Free flyweight competition here at the Goodwill Games in Moscow. And the red is David Grimman from Venezuela. Kind of a classy boxer with a good reach and range and speed against a bit of a brawler, Joseph Lawler from Ireland, the current Irish champion out of Dublin. Record of 65 wins, 15 losses. The current na dub, uh, national champion in Ireland. Maybe a little bit behind. Uh, maybe a little bit behind. I think he is at this stage, and for the first couple of rounds, of course, this is the third and final round. The quickness again of the combinations thrown by Grimmins from Venezuela, who's just 19 and has a promising future in amateur boxing. He's been as high as the silver medalist podium at the World Championships in Reno held this past spring. He's got a good right hand, but a pretty quick left hand, too, as we've seen. Very quiet crowd here at the sports complex, but I think that's natural. Uh, it's just started number one, and number two, we haven't seen any Russians yet, and later on uh, tonight, we're going to see some, and I think they'll come come to life a little bit. Yeah, no vested interest here for a Venezuelan and an Irishman fighting in the ring in the capital of the Soviet Union. But there is the right hand thrown by Lauder. A good chopping right he gets through again. He just doesn't do enough of that. He can't sustain any series of blows. Uh, the other kid's hands are too quick for him. Yeah, yeah, they really are. The Venezuelan is amazingly quick. Turns him around right there and is cautioned by the referee, McGuire of the United States, for that. We're into round three with the pace continuing to be set by David Grimman. We have earlier seen the first American, Juan Acevedo, get off the plane and less than 24 hours later take on a tough Korean from North Korea and lose by a margin of five points on average from the officials. So the other flyaways now in this division are continuing to try to qualify along with Anthony Arthur Johnson of the United States from St. Louis. But Grimman has it pretty much his own way. Half a dozen or more short chopping blows to the head. Those are all scoring blows in this game. And the low head is being cautioned now from the referee McGuire. Oh, a good combination. Yes, he did. Lala. He got his best combination in. A good left setup and a hammering right to follow. A second right thrown right there. I know he's had trouble doing initiating it because of the quickness of the Venezuela. Well, if you can get a good young fighter, he's got a lot of stamina and quick hands, you just got to teach him to keep throwing, 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 throwing punches. You're going to have yourself a fine amateur fighter. You bet. Well, here is Grimmin again at the bell coming on, as is Lawler now, getting right down to the final few seconds of competition. Lawler had a pretty good third round, but I fear the damage done on the first two might be too extensive by Grimmin of Venezuela. We'll see with their decision. Okay, we'll be back to the boxing venue for that decision in a moment, the flyweights, but let me tell you about a heavyweight on tap tonight. Michael Bent of the United States will swing into action. Bent in the heavyweight class, over 200 pounds, will fight perhaps his toughest test, uh, taking on a Bulgarian in the first round, Svilin Rusinov. 
Bent has to stay busy. He's big, he fights flat-footed, he's a good body puncher, very sharp right hand. So, again, Michael Bent, one of the stars coming up uh, tonight on our primetime coverage as boxing opens with a bang. We'll be back for that flyweight decision and wrap it up next, so stay with us. The Venezuela and Lawler of Ireland. Grimmon with a good edge in the first two rounds. He was able to sustain it in part in the third round, despite a valiant attempt by Lawler to overcome his quickness later in the final round. And the five judges just tallying up their scorecards, and we'll have the announcement here momentarily from Moscow. It is a unanimous decision for David Grimmon, just 19 years old, from Venezuela. He will continue here in the Goodwill Games, a 5-0 unanimous decision in the eyes of all the ringside judges in their flyweight bout. Take a break, guys. Okay. Okay, so a very busy, ex expected busy uh, days of action ahead in boxing. The flyweights get us going. The Goodwill Games, co-sponsored by Turner Broadcasting System Incorporated, the USSR State Committees for Television and Radio and for Physical Culture and Sport, are not affiliated in any way with Goodwill Industries of America Incorporated, who conduct the Goodwill Industries Games in various locations around the world to provide the healthy experience of competition to disabled persons. Turner Broadcasting System Incorporated urges your support of the Goodwill Industries and our games. Well, the central issue so far at the Goodwill Games this night in Moscow, women's volleyball. The Soviets moved to the gold medal game by beating a tough, persistent United States team in semifinal action. Four games it took, and it was a compelling match. Coming up on our primetime coverage of the Goodwill Games, boxing, the main event. Heavyweight Michael Bent, whose father won over $2 million in the New York State Lottery, looks to hit the jackpot himself and takes his first step toward the gold. Also, the unbeaten U.S. water polo team, led by the dominant man in the pool, Terry Schroeder, takes on tradition-rich Hungary. We'll also have another excellent matchup in women's volleyball, Japan against Peru, in the other semifinal, for the right to meet the Soviet women. Also, the exciting conclusion of cycling from the velodrome. Can American Mark Gorski chop down the mighty East Germans? And wrestling started today. The Soviets feature the best in the world in Sergei Vyologlazov but the aggressive, tenacious U.S. team figures to be tough to topple. That's the Friday night lineup. For now, I'm Nick Charles saying so long for now from the Soviet Union, but the Goodwill Games will continue.